Hey folks, welcome to this lecture. We're going to be talking about waterfall charts and I'm going to show you how to build waterfall charts in Google Sheets. We're going to take a look at a simple version, which is the one you can see on the screen right now. We'll take a look at a more complex version. And then finally, we'll look at a method to do this using app script, which is the little JavaScript language behind Google Sheets. So what is a waterfall chart? Well, it's the chart you can see right now. And it's a way of showing the cumulative effects of increases and decreases to an initial starting variable. So in this example here, I'm starting with my headcount for my department at the beginning of the year. Then I recruit some people from some other departments. I hire some new people, uh, but some of my people also leave. So some go to other departments, some resign. And unfortunately, you know, I have to terminate a few people. Put all of those variables onto my chart and I can see very clearly how I go from 90 at the start of the year to 117 at the end of the year and I can see the effects of those various changes and obviously the new hires being the big change. So that's the idea of a waterfall chart. As I said, this is the simple one. We'll take a look at this one first. Just open up a blank sheet. I've put some data in there. Feel free to start with this data. At the end of this video, there'll be a link to my blog post with these templates available with all this data and the formulas and the charts in them. So you can just go and check those check those out. That link is in the end at the end of the video and also down in the description below. But for now, let's say you've got the data set up like this, then what's your next step? So what we're going to do is we need to create another table. Just we can't draw our chart straight from this. We need to have a second table that just passes that data out and gets it into the right shape for our waterfall chart. So again, let's just start with setting that up. So I'm going to have a label here and I'm going to just link my my labels very easy just to start. So I, I just replicate that. And then I'm going to start with a column called base, a second column called endpoints, uh, positive bars and negative bars. And they're the, they're the different scenarios that I need to set up my data for. So use the format painter here just to format all of those so they look the same. Now the base ones for this line here, which is one of the end that's my start position and this is my end position, then the base and the endpoints, they have their own special formulas for these two, for these two lines. So I'm going to put a zero in here and a zero down here because they always start. If I just show you that, they always start at the uh, X axis there. And then the endpoint is simply just whatever the value is. So I'm just going to link those by equaling to uh, B10 there, for example. So they're very simple. So I need to determine if I look back at my chart, what the how far above the x axis these these different variables are floating. So what is the value that goes into here? And when we actually build these, you'll see when, when I come to the chart part of this, what we actually the way we actually do this is this this is a stacked column chart, and this is an actual value here underneath each of these. And what we do is we just set the color of that value of that column there to be transparent. And that gives the effect then that the, the other variable, this little piece up here is floating on top of that now transparent bar. So we'll see that. So what we need to do is calculate the value of those bars, which is going to be in here in this, in this base section, the endpoints will be blank. And then this is how big those variables are and whether they're pointing up or pointing down. So, so what I do is that I say, okay, if, and I'm going to say uh, if B5 is greater than zero, then sum everything from. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, and this is where we'll see how we uh, go. So bear with me. So I need to sum everything uh, initially from up to just the one line behind. If it's greater than zero, if it's less than zero, then I want to sum everything from B4 again, but this time to B5. And it's really important that I put that little dollar sign to lock these ranges at the starting position of this uh, of the formula here, so that it doesn't it doesn't just drag that down. You can see if I now if I copy this down the next one, you'll see it always starts at B4, which is what I want because that's my first value of 90. So you know, wherever your first value is, that's really important. It's in there and it has a, it's locked to that row. So then I just copy this down and uh, you can see that there, the different 
um, positions that my bars are going to be floating at. And then over here on positive bars, a little easier, I'm just going to take the max of um, B18 and, sorry, not B18, uh, B5 or zero. So it just removes any, any negative bars. And then similarly here, I'm going to just do the, the minimum, but with a negative sign in front of it. So, so minus, min, and it's B5 and zero. So which is the minimum between zero and B5, and then just negate it. So what, what it's going to do is find this one here and say, okay, minus six is less than zero. So take the minus six, but then a, a minus in front of a minus six gives me the plus six. And, and that's my data ready for my chart. So nothing too crazy. I go and highlight it now, come up to insert, click charts, and let's go and take a look at, and exactly, it's recommended me the stacked bar chart, so that's one we're gonna go for. That's great, we just need to now customize it because you can see that the, the colors are all sort of all wrong for what we want, but it's a good start. So we'll just rename it, simple waterfall charts. I'm gonna get rid of the legend because it doesn't mean anything in this case. The horizontal axis, is it gonna let me, so we'll just leave that as it is. We don't need that word label there. And then series, this is where we want to customize. So base, I want to, this is where I click base, which are these blue ones. And they're the ones I want to just make, just to remove. So I click on the color and say none. And you see how they disappear now? And there we have a waterfall chart. Now I'd like to swap those colors around because I don't want the negative ones to be green. I want them to be red. So let's change the endpoints first of all to say like a dark gray. Let's change the positive ones to green, obviously. And then finally, let's change the negative ones to, to the red. And there we have it, our first waterfall chart. So that's looking pretty good now. Maybe make those a little smaller. Um, you'll leave them also slanted. So, so that's pretty nice now. Let's insert that into our charts. And there we have it, there's our very first simple waterfall chart as I, as I described. And as I said, there's, there's a much more discussion on this in my blog post links below in the description and also at the end of this video. Now then, uh, let's take a look at a more complex waterfall chart. So I've got one open here. Whoa, what the hell is that? That is a literal waterfall chart and it's just me messing around. Okay. Let's take a look at the more complex example. Now, as I said, this one is more, made more complex because I have negative bars. And I also have bars that cross the X axis. So it makes my formulas a little more complex. So back in our waterfall sheets, I've just set up a, the little table again and made a new table to the right of it. That's empty for now, apart from these labels I've added. And we're going to go ahead and fill in the, the values in here. So as, as before the base for these two is just going to be zero and the endpoints are whatever the values are. So that's a pretty easy start. So, it's always nice and easy just to, to, to get these two, just make them even give them a color to just get those two set up very quickly for the middle rows. Things are a little more complex. Let's just take a look. So I have various scenarios. I have these positive bars above. I have these positive bars below, which are these green ones here and here. These are representing positive values. Then I have the negative bars that are above the X axis. And then again, this little one here and these ones here, the negative bars below the X axis. So I need to have those four scenarios accounted for, which is why I have these four columns here. Okay. So these middle rows are a little more complex with the formulas and in the interest of time, they're quite, com quite long. So I'm not going to type them out. I'm going to just copy them in. So I'm going to grab them from my other sheet here and just copy these in. We'll have a quick talk about them. They're available in my blog post and the template. Okay. So let's just drag that down. So let's just talk about the data first. So the base here is the value. If you remember, if I look at my complex waterfall chart, how much above or below the axis I want the float to be. So here I'm starting from zero here. I'm starting from zero because I'm crossing the X axis. Here's zero. This one obviously has a value of about five. This one has a value of 25 and this one has a value of about 30. So we should see those values uh, showing up here in my, in my uh, base and there they are. So minus five is the float down for, for let's just close that simple one for this one, minus 25 for that one and minus 30 for that one. So that was, looks good. Uh, now then the, the 65, which is the, that positive green one here, 
needs to be split into a, a, a section above and then a negative section below. So I need to figure out how to uh, work out how much goes above and how much goes below. And that's based upon what the value is in the, the prior row. So which in which case this is the initial one. So that was a minus 20. So I want to match that and have minus 20 below and 45 above. And then for my next one, it's saying, okay, how far above did I go? And I'm 45 above. And then my value is minus 50. So 45 will come back, bring you back down to the x-axis, but then I need to keep going with the other minus five that takes me down five below the axis, uh, etc. So, you know, they're not the easiest things to understand. They just use a lot of mix, mins and maxes and sums. And again, it's the, the trick is this inside the sum here is to say, do I sum my rows up to and including my current row or just the, the prior rows only not including the one I'm on at the moment. And that difference there, that difference of whether I include my value now or not is the key. Okay, so my data is ready. I've highlighted it. I'm going to come up to insert chart and create a chart. Now, sometimes this happens where it doesn't recognize all of the data for some reason. Uh, it's quite strange. What I've, a quick trick I found if this happens is to click one of these other recommended charts that does have all of the data. You can see now it's picked up my other series. Then come into chart types and then go back and pick the chart you want, which is the stacked column. And then this time it does in fact pick up all the data. Let's go and customize it now. So we'll call it uh, complex water for charts. charts. Uh, we'll get rid of the legend, doesn't mean anything in this case. And then we want to change the colors of my of my series. So the very first one is the base. Let's make that transparent because that's the most important thing. Let's make my, you see I have my two positive ones and then I have my two negative ones. So let's make these positive ones both green. And then click green. And then we'll make both of these negative ones red and then, then we should be in good shape. So let's click the default red and then my other negative one. And you can see, it's those negative red ones that I just finally going to change now, make that red as well. And then we have a nice waterfall chart now showing the positives and negative values and the cumulative effect of how we end up with our final amount. So let's click insert. And there's my final complex waterfall chart example. So one last one I want to show you very quickly is how to do this with app script. Uh, so I'm not going to actually run through, type out all the code that would take um, forever. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll point you to my GitHub page where the code exists and also refer you to the template I built for the app script one week, which you can just use, um, but I'll show you it in action anyway, uh, and how you can set it up from the GitHub page. Okay. So come to our, our new tab. So it's a little more complex and that's why the beauty of the app script version is that once we've set it up, it will very easily be able to deal with this and create those waterfall charts for us. So step one is to come up to tools, script editor. And that opens up a new tab and that's where we, this is where we write our code that will go with the, uh, with our Google sheet. So if you're new to app script, then definitely check out my blog post on, uh, beginner guides of using app script. That's in my, on my website. But otherwise, if you're, if you've done it, use this before, then let's, let's dive in. So again, come to this, my, the GitHub page. So I want to click into here and just highlight all of this, all of these columns of data. Control C or Command C if you're on a on a Mac. Come back to my code window, Control V or Command V. Let's just save that. We'll give it a name, which is waterfall chart. Click OK. Now the very first thing I need to do is to actually run this little function called on open. And then what will happen is Google will ask me to review the permissions on the Google Sheet and allow this script to run. And I click yes and then we'll we'll be able to run the waterfall charts one. So I'm going to come to select function on open, which is, hey, when the sheet opens, do this. And I want to just run that for now. And it'll say authorization re required, review permissions. And I'm going to say this, this uh, app script that I'm building would like to view and manage spreadsheets, which I'm going to allow. Click allow and it's executed that function. I can see it was running up there. I come back to waterfall charts now and what it's done, that little script has added this button called waterfall charts. So that's really nice. So my next, uh, the next step is to just highlight all of the data, including the headings here. And that's a really important step because the script is written to, to look for this range of data, come up to waterfall charts and click this insert chart, and boom, 
what it does is it creates the table for me automatically very, very quickly. And you can see it just embeds the chart. Now, the one thing it can't do is change all of these colors for me automatically. So I need to just jump into my editor, advanced edit, and just do that manually. But as you can see, that's saving me a ton of time. So let's change those endpoints to, to gray. Let's change the base to non, to transparent. And let's change the positive columns to all green and the negative columns to all default red, both of them. Boom. And you can see how quick that was to create that waterfall chart. Uh, and so, you know, if you have complex data, then setting up this app script, it's super easy to set up and it's super quick to run. Folks, that's the end. That's everything I've got for your waterfall charts. Check out the link in my description below and on the, the bottom right hand side now to visit the blog post. Take a look. If you're interested in data visualization, take another look at a Google video on dynamic charts, top right. And lastly, subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on my face in the bottom right corner now. Thanks for watching, folks.